Number seven out of 10 this season on the FIL Luge World Cup Tour. The site is Oberhof, Germany, a race that was originally scheduled to be held in Lake Placid, New York in the United States. All of the North American and Asian races on the calendar this year were moved to Europe due to the pandemic. Hi again, everyone, I'm Tim Singer. Welcome to run number two of the women's singles competition. Earlier today, Natalie Geisenberger set a track record. Madeline Agla set a start record on this very technical track. We'll see highlights of the top three in a moment as we count them down to the final few races of this season. It's a cool day, 20 degrees, 86 degree humidity, third place in run number one, a winner of two races already this season, Russia's Tatiana Ivanova, the second winningest athlete among the active competitors. Madeline Agler, coming off of her first ever podium a couple of weeks ago, sits in second, and they're all chasing down the perennial season bridesmaid. Natalie Geisenberger has finished second in eight consecutive races. She's hardly a bridesmaid, however. She's a two-time Olympic champion and literally a, a bride who got married a couple of years ago and just had her first child. A check at the start list has three Americans in the top 20, two of them in the top 14, including Summer Britcher, who sits in ninth place, heading into run number two. But the battle for the podiums is going to be tight. Just thousands of a second separating fourth from third place, also very tight among the top two, the German and the Austrian. So kick back, get ready for some luge action, the final race of the weekend here in Oberhof, Germany. This is the central portion of the country, great forests, great mountains, a very scenic spot. Well, now to help with the call of the action of run number two, I'm pleased to introduce from the USA Luge program, 1998 Olympic silver medalist, Gordy Shear. Welcome back, Gordy. Tim, it's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to some exciting racing here in Oberhof, one of the most challenging tracks in the world. Olena Stetskev now on course to open things up here in run number two. Stetskev finished 28 out of 28, where every athlete got a finishing time in run number one. No crashes to speak of. Starting from the women's start, you're going into curve four, and as she was in the middle of curve four, you could actually see her elbows out, and she was settling into the sled trying to just get into that riding position. This start ramp is a challenge. St curve four is staring you in the face and you gotta get right into that sled and transition from those aggressive paddles into that riding position. Very smooth looking run. Now the speed, you'll see that 111, is roughly about four kilometers an hour slower than the fastest speeds in run number one. That's not a big surprise among these first few athletes whose real goal is to maybe crack the top 25. Not a bad looking run for this young slider. Uh, experience is key in this sport. You want to be able to rely on your, your memory and your bank of runs that you've taken throughout your lifetime. And if you've young, you're young and you don't have a lot of runs, it's tough to kind of fall back on that. Once you see the green light, you see that clock counting down. The athletes have 30 seconds. Veronica Ravenna very much prepared, as you saw, with the shield already down. She was grabbing the handles, and now the lone representative in Luge right now from Argentina is on course. Argentina, not your traditional Luge powerhouse. No, nope. there have oh. there been a few, though, right? Yeah, there have been, certainly over the years, there have been a few sliders from Argentina. You see that in our sport, there's a lot of smaller nations. Uh, they sort of band together as one team, some of these smaller nations uh, uh, into the International Luge Federation team. Although in Veronica's uh, case, she has the good fortune to be able to train with the Germans previously Correct. with the Canadians oh. and the Americans. That's the most action we've seen all day. It was yeah. right at the finish, so Veronica stays into the lead by a pretty good margin of four hundredths but she crashed out of that finished prizal curve. Yeah, just that driving and establishing an even line in the chrysal is, is critical, and the exit can really bite you sometimes. 
the exit of curve 13, came out with a little bit too much direction to the right, which means she probably didn't get enough of a cross between, and here's that Chrysler exit, airborne. <laughs> That's, uh, that's the spot where in a normal season when the winner crosses the finish line, you see the sparks fly, the, the fireworks go off. Right. Unfor unfortunately, with no spectators here, there's no one to put on a show for. Now Nina Zugler, the first of the Italians, four of them in today's race. She's still just 19 years old, although this is her fourth season already on the World Cup, her first full season. And Gordy, a lot of the juniors are getting full-time senior action this year because there is no Junior World Cup Tour. That's true, and it's sort of a good opportunity for some of the younger sliders to take that step up, get some World Cup experience when they might not have had an opportunity to do so in years before. Nina had a very disappointing 27th place finish the last time out here in Oberhof last month not faring much better this time around, which goes to show something that you guys talk so much about, Gordy. It's some tracks you love, others takes forever to learn. Particularly this one, this is really a, a track where there's so many different driving points and pressure points, and if you don't know exactly where they are, it can be difficult. Currently in second place in the early going, as we count them down from 1 to 28, the first run leader, Natalie Geisenberger, will be the last to go. Just a little bit off uh, in some of these labyrinth corners here. She was in curve uh, 11, definitely hung on a little bit, uh, got a little bit of a cross, and just not quite the crisp, precise lines you want to see. Eileen Frisch has fallen on somewhat of a hard time since her top eight performance at the Olympic Games in 2018. She's been very hard pressed this year to make it even into the top 20 in World Cup action. Still representing Korea, although this is very much a home track for Eileen who grew up a couple of hours away in Saxony. Yeah, an interesting story. She, prior to the games in 2018, was able to obtain a Korean passport and having not competed for a couple of years, made the uh, transition over to the Korean team. Former junior world champion, and uh, we all know how hard it is to crack that senior German women's team. And so she made the decision. She still has to spend a good chunk of the year in South Korea to retain that citizenship. Her yeah, sled is looking very drivable. I'm, I'm guessing she's on a fairly conservative setup. 41.787 puts her well out in front of the Canadian Argentinian Veronica Ravenna. She was able to, coming out of curve 13, really just make a, an obvious and quick correction, which leads me to believe that maybe her steals are a little bit on the sharper side. That indicates maybe she's not entirely comfortable and just needs that little bit of extra confidence. Eileen done for the day. She will head to Innsbruck with the rest of the tour after today's action. Raluca Stramaturaru from Romania now on course. She enjoys uh, long walks on the mountain, riding her bike, trekking when she is not losing during the summer. Raluca also serves as one of three athlete representatives to the International Luge Federation, the other two being Americans. Yeah, Chris Master and Summer Britcher, and that athlete representation is obviously very important uh, so that everybody in the world understands what these athletes are going through and what their needs are and what their perspective is. Raluca's seventh place finish at the Olympics in 2018 was the highest placing finish for any Romanian, any sport at those games. She's wavering a little on that straightaway into the Kreisel. Yeah, little, little problem out of curve 13 and made a correction and it was actually a little bit too much. It was an overcorrection and then she was able to 
keep things under control, but she added some distance. And also, anytime you steer these sleds, they're actually slowing down a little bit. Sear coming out direction to the right, coming out of curve 13. She makes the correction, and then it was just a bit too much. And then, so she drives it back, and then, like I said, distance and driving are two time killers for you in this sport. Standings right now, Frisch of South Korea leading the way, then Ravenna of Argentina, and Strama Truraru of Romania. And Gordy, you're in good company because each of the top three have also been guest commentators with me in past races. <laughs> now Claudia Domaratska of the still somewhat small but very much improving Polish program. Yeah, a relay uh, medal here during the first race, which was very exciting. Anytime you see a smaller nation like Poland get on the podium, it's just great for the sport. Well, they're being coached with that FIL small nation program you referred to earlier. And the head coach of that team now is someone from Poland, Maciej Karabski, longtime competitor. Yeah, great slider. Beautiful run. This is particularly that exit of 13 was just beautiful. A little bit of a rise, an uneven line in the Kreisel. Well, while Fritsch still holds on to the fastest run here in the second heat, it's the two run combined time of Domorodska putting her into the lead for the time being. Looking for uh, this is uh, the crossover into curve 11. Exiting 11 into 12, you want to see a nice early entrance along that right side of the wall going into curve 12. Taking her time getting out of that outrun. Domorotska into the lead. Now starter number seven here, run number two. This is 17-year-old Yuliana Tonitska in just her second appearance on the World Cup. And Gordy, we can take a couple of questions here in the early going before we hit our TV audience. And uh, Craig, who's always up early watching in North America, wants to know, talking about the routine of athletes, how early did they get to the track? And uh, what's the best kind of pre-race meal? <laughs> well, this is a power sport, so you want some protein. You want to get to the track about, I'd say, a good hour. You got to get there. You got to weigh everything. Make sure everything is legal. Everything is under control. You want to be able to walk the track if that's your routine, and then do a lot of that pre-visualization, which is so important in this sport. You don't get a lot of time taking runs down the track, so you need to really think about what you're doing. Well, everyone is very impressed with this young Ukrainian, Tunitska. She looked super smooth in run number one. She did, she repeated that again here, Gordy, for the first place time. It's gonna be a while before she can play with the big ladies, but, uh, but so far so good, right? Yeah, I mean, for a 17 year old, this is just a phenomenal performance. A little bit of late height in curve 13, you know, tap that right wall, but dealt with it beautifully and, and great position. I mean, to be able to respond to pressure like this as a 17 year old is, is really great. Caroline Maxwell of Calgary, the lone Canadian traveling the World Cup tour for the women this year. Her 21st place showing in run number one is one spot better than what she did here in Oberhof last year. Like the Americans, the Canadians skipped the first four events on the schedule and really unfortunate, the world championships in two weeks were scheduled for Canada, Jordy. Yeah, that's a big loss. You know, the Canadian athletes were I'm sure looking forward to a, a home world championships and an opportunity to race in front of their family and friends on a track that they know real well. Home track advantage is huge in the sport. Amazing. So to, to lose that is, is definitely a bummer. And, and, and of course they've booked the world championships out several years, including back here in Oberhof in a couple of years. Will Whistler, would you expect they'd be first in line the next time they make a decision on the location? You would certainly hope so. I mean, it, it would only seem fair. 
Nice little run down at the bottom for Caroline Maxwell as she betters her place from last year here in Oberhof by at least one place, hanging on to her spot, 123.428. Yeah, not a bad run. You know, it's not, it, it's tough to kind of jump right back in as we're seeing with both the Americans and the Canadians this year uh, without having a, a ton of racing experience. The US and Canadian athletes have been stuck at home training. And, and for the Canadians, Gordy, that's sort of a relative term because the home of most of those athletes is Calgary, but now that track is no longer in operation. They spend all of their time in Whistler, where some of the, the national team come from. Now Verena Hofa, 19 years old. She finished sixth last year at the World Championships in the under 23 division, which is a race within a race. If nothing else, it gives the athletes a few more opportunities to get some medals, see where they stand against their contemporaries. Nice looking start. The Italians have gained uh, a new start coach this year in the great slider Tatiana Hufner. And we've definitely seen the Italian start times drop a little bit this season and that will continue to do so as they continue to learn from her in the coming years. Amazing secret. How come your program were, wasn't on top of that bringing Tatiana over? That was a great, that was a great get for sure. Nice run by Hoffer, 41.505. That's a full tenth of a second exactly better than her first heat time. Track is in good shape and clearly she made a couple of corrections as well. Yeah. Definitely, uh, we're looking at, once again, 13 exit here. Stays cool, she comes out with a little direction, but does a nice job to just keep it along that right wall, which is really key to getting a smooth entrance into the Chrysler and not cutting ice, as we say, and, you know, making that uh, spray come out of the back of the sled and losing time. Run number two in Oberhof, Germany. And the first of three Americans in today's race, Brittany Arndt, finished in 19th earlier today in the opening heat. She's 22 years old. She has covered most of the USA growing up, having started as a kid in Florida before moving to Park City, where one of the two American tracks is located, and most recently spending her time in Lake Placid in the Northeast, where the other track and Brittany with a nice start. You see her taking her spiked gloves, digging them into the ice, trying to accelerate the sled as far and as fast and as aggressively as possible to build speed. The start's the only place where you can actually make time and gain speed. Every place else, you're really just trying not to lose speed down the track. Verena Hoffa of Italy came down a moment ago and has the lead down at the bottom. Art finished 19th last year in the Oberhof race. And of course, the Americans did not take part in the first four races this season. And a lot of activity for Arndt on the straightaway into the Chrysler. She came out of curve 13 and tapped that right wall and was not able to get things back under control. That's, that's a heartbreak for Brittany. Well, she got it together. She seems okay, if not a more than a little disappointed, Gordy. Yeah, this is not an easy track. So we're looking at the replay. She rises up at the end of curve 13 and then touches that right wall, touches the left. And what you really, at that point, once you've hit with that kind of impact that we call that ping ponging, and it's very difficult to get the sled back under control at that point. Brittany Art still a young, improving American athlete with one top 10 career World Cup result in her second full season. Next up at the top, this is Lisa Schulte of Austria. Lisa, probably the happiest person in the sport to be returning to her home track in Innsbruck next year, or next week rather, because that's uh, by far where her best results have been. A pair of six places over the past couple of years. 
And you, as you mentioned, some people know some tracks and some people, and then home track advantage can't be overstated. Yeah, this is not a bad looking run. I really like her position on the sled. It's important to keep your head back. Anytime you pick your head up, you're creating aerodynamic drag, slowing the sled down. She's staying pretty cool here. Nice from 13. 70 Even miles line. an hour exactly as she crosses the finish line. A full tenth of a second up on Verena Hoppe. And it's Austria moving into the lead. Yeah, 41-4 is not, not a bad run. Very respectable, definitely. There's been a lot of changing among the Austrian women's program going back the last five years or so with retirements. Young athletes coming in and they're all doing a very good job. They are, just strength across the board in this Austrian program. They've really, they've got their technology down, their sled science, uh, their manufacturing process. Everything is nice and even and precise. Very nice. A little post-mortem between coach and athlete. Get that mask on. That's the race director, Tomas Zimmerman, has done a great job, not once but twice this season on the FIL World Cup Tour. Natalie Mogg now on course for Switzerland, which is where all of the athletes are excited to be headed for the World Cup finale. First time in nine years a race will be held on the historic track in San Moritz. It's an exciting place to go, Gordy, but bring your wallet and, and preferably someone else's wallet too. <laughs> well, especially this year where all of the athletes are required to stay in single rooms. It's the athletes are overjoyed by the fact that they're going there. I'm, I'm not sure that the, uh, the teams that have to fund it are so excited. <laughs> right. Tight race here between Switzerland and Austria. These two great alpine skiing powers. In now in the sport of luge, two hundredths of a second. They were separated by it that last split. Now it's opened up to five hundredth as Natalie Mogg moves into first place. She is kind of moved back and forth between the seated group and the qualifying group this year. I, I would ex expect that, you know, it's, uh, it, this is a, a very tight and competitive group and, you know, staying in that seated group is not such an easy thing to do for any athlete. This is a uh, labyrinth here, upper labyrinth. It's a place where you can lose a lot of time. Coach Norbert Locke heading up the German athletes as well as the Swiss from year to year. Mog in the fir in, into first place, booting Schulte off of the top step. And now Ekaterina Ketnikova, the first of four Russians we'll see today. Ketnikova's world championship last year was really one of the highlights of the season, one of the nicest moments. She, Gordy, had been very consistent, top five, top six in almost every race. And she was a surprise world champion, kind of slid in the shadows of her teammates. And it's always nice to see a slight underdog take the top spot. Yeah, it's one of the things that makes watching any sports exciting when you see someone really rise and hit the mark on the big day. A little skid coming out of curve 11 into curve 12. Such a huge drop off from 13 into that straightaway. And she crosses in fourth place. This is gonna go uh, down as one of her most disappointing performances in the last couple of seasons. Well, if you're gonna make a mistake, doing it in Oberhof is certainly forgivable. This is, as I said, a challenge. Not easy for anybody getting some later height than she probably wanted. And then going into 11 here, just hangs on a little long at the end, heading too early into 12. The sled breaks into a skid. She drops her feet to get things under control and does a nice job of doing so to make a, a, a good, safe transition from curves uh, 12 into 13. 
Well, not a lot of spectators on hand here. In fact, none to be exact, but the coaches are allowed trackside to take in the action. And that action continues here with run number two. And the second of the Americans, 21-year-old Ashley Farquharson. Ashley in 15th place after run number one. It's Natalie Mogg of Switzerland, the new leader down at the bottom. Ashley at the start. Spent a lot of time this summer trying to increase and build her strength at the start. And she's done a good job of it. See her settling into the sled. Her elbows, she actually didn't get her hands into the sled until the middle of curve four because you got to get, after you finish your paddles, you got to get right into that sled and start driving immediately. Farquharson finished 13th at the World Cup race here last season. After this week, the athletes head to Innsbruck, Austria, then the World Championship in Königsee, Germany, and the season-ending race will be in Switzerland at the track in San Moritz. To the finish, into the lead, Ashley Farquharson, and the better stat, Gordy, are the two ones, not just the top overall time, but she's had the fastest run so far here in heat number two, and she's yeah. pleased. She's thrilled. That's great. Good for her. Good for her. That was a nice, nice run from Ashley and a really nice lower uh, section of the course. Early on to curve seven, which is what you want. Staying cool. Her head could come back just a little bit. And here we are in the transition between curves 11 and 12, which she did nicely. A little bit of height on the end, but nitpicking she's happy and she should be this is a, a good race for her on paper you would expect that this woman Alitza Taruma is very quickly going to move out ahead of Ashley Farquharson as Alitza is ranked number six in the World Cup standings with a podium earlier this year here in Oberhof however that's on paper Gordy we just saw the American have a solid run we'll see what what can happen here, a good start, but with you know only a hundredth of a second, it's gonna come down to who can drive this last run better. This Latvian won her first ever World Cup race last season in Winterberg, Germany. She does own an Olympic silver medalist as part of the team relay in 2014. Just a thousandth back at that last split, now she's eight hundredths back. And given the bottom section that Ashley drove, I think it's going to be tough for, for her to catch uh, Ashley at this point. So the Latvian crosses in Whoa. second place. She picked up some time on the American down there at the bottom, but Ashley Farquharson moves up one spot. She can do no worse than a top 13 here, which will be her best result of a still very abbreviated season for the Americans. Yeah, you can see the relief on Ashley's face that she hung on. I'm surprised how much time she gained down at the bottom. I thought Ashley was just a little bit cleaner other than the uh, the transition getting slightly too early into 12, but Taruma with, with uh, a respectable and solid run. I mean, uh, good for Ashley's. That was really a, a nice run. That's Natalie Geisenberger on the left there prepping her sled. She's the first run leader. She's an Olympic champion. She'll be the last to come down the hill here in Oberhof as Andrea Fetter prepares with the shield down. She'll grab the handles. Earlier today in run number one, she set a start record on this Oberhof track, only to have Austrian Madeleine Egla snatch it away a few sleds later. It's like war of the starts. Everybody just keeps getting faster and faster here. It's good progression. You like to see that in sport. See that right leg dropping moving around that's that's how these athletes are actually driving the sled using your shoulders and your feet to control the sled vetter finally earned her first podium last season the middle of last year after no less than eight top five finishes fourth and fifth place results looking good here beautiful exit from curve 13 down into 14, the Kreisel 270 degree corner. 41.248, really solid run. So the Americans stay at the top of the leader zone, comes to an end. 
We used to call it the leader box 40 because they would put it in a box, uh, picture in picture. And now I think we have to rename it. Yeah, uh, that maybe the, uh, the the flower the reception zone. I don't know what you want to call that, Tim. <laughs> the lead the leader house, H A U S. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can say Fetter now in the house. <laughs> Andrea Fetter moves into first. Final thoughts and visualization from Latvian Ula Zerna. 12th place after run number one. Ula's had a rough year. Her only top 10 was last week on her home track in Latvia. When not competing, Ula is a clothes designer. She owns her own company, Ula La Clothing. She does that. She did the same thing on the first run where she finishes her paddles and looks down to her right and then settles into her sled. Paddles are super important. Again, it's the only place you can accelerate is the start. So you want to be just as efficient, powerful, and aggressive as you can at that start. Zerna trailing by a pretty wide margin at that second to last intermediate split, but a nice exit off of curve 13. Even line, but it's gonna to be tough for her to make up all that time. Does make up a little, but not quite enough. 122.793, her speed of 71.1, the fastest of anyone so far in run number two, but as you know, Gordy, speed is far from everything in this sport. Yeah, you got to carry, carry speed and momentum all the way down the course. It's about being smooth. It's about driving the most precise lines to take advantage of gravity and make gravity work for you as you progress down the hill. But I have to say, the Latvian sleds are really running nicely and building speed down at the bottom. So they've got it set up right for sure. A look at the Panorama Hotel off in the distance on a foggy, cloudy day in Oberhof, Germany. And one of the local heroes is right about to start, Olympic silver medalist Deanna Eitberger. Not only did she take that Olympic medal, Eitberger was the winner of the last race held here last month in Oberhof, her home track. She's got so much confidence, a lot of experience on this track. Uh, new mother, so didn't maybe have enough time to train as aggressively as she'd like to this summer. So a little bit behind on the start we're seeing here. Our congratulations to Deanna and her partner, Chris. Proud parents of Levi, born last February. Uh, really unusual to see here her feet go down on this track she knows so well. Yeah, two mistakes coming out of curves 11 and curves 13. So this is, as you said, a big surprise. Fourth place is all she could muster from the race winner last month here. That is a surprise indeed, but the good news for Deanna is she's headed back to Munich in the morning to see her young boy. It's tough. You know, Deanna was telling me this is very difficult to be back on tour. She feels the competitive fire, but she greatly misses her family. Looking at the slow motion of curve seven, you want to get early. I, I think I like uh, Vetter's line a little bit more on the left. Sets you up at curve eight. And here we are, here we are where she made her mistake, just crossing away and going late into curve 12. She did a nice correction, but another mistake also in 13 as well. All right, here in Oberhof, Germany, it's the top 10 after run number one, led off by young Hanna Prock, 20 years old from Austria. Hanna made the Olympics as a teenager, finished 17th in Pyeongchang. She has two career podiums already, including a bronze medal on the track in Königsee, Germany, in Bavaria, where this year's world championships will be held. It'll be interesting to see how she progresses 
through her career, but to already have uh, individual medals, especially this season, is quite impressive. Well, those were not this season, but in, in her short career. Big skid and a big hit. That's Oberhoff coming to bite you. That curve 12-13 combination. If you don't get that just right, you can see what happens there. And it's a, and new, it's a newly renovated track, right, Gordy? Yeah, they've, they've made some renovations over the years to this track to make curves 12-13 a little bit uh, safer. And certainly, she just got too early, too much cross into curve 13 and then got knocked down. And then you see what happens is all of the height comes up at the end of curve 13 and she's forced into that right wall. Well, we now have eight sleds remaining, actually nine, because in ninth place here in Oberhof is the final American and the best shot for the USA to move up in the standings. It's five-time World Cup race winner, Summer Britcher. Until today, Britcher held the track record here in Oberhof, as well as the record on the Olympic track in South Korea. See if Summer can improve. She had a little mistake on her start in her last run, and that's where she lost her time. Summer has one top 10 this year. That was last week in Latvia. 26 years old from Glen Rock, Pennsylvania. A little cleaner there at the start, Gordy, but it didn't look perfect. Cleaner, but not perfect. Her last paddle, she really reached high. There was a lot of excessive hand movement. Hopefully she didn't lose too much time and can build. She knows this track well. She's a medalist on this track in the past. And if anyone can do it, Summer, on a day where she's confident, she is the person. Yes, she took bronze here in the World Cup last year, and she's making up time now on the Italian, only a hundredth back at that second to last split. Beautiful in the straightaway. Nice straightaway, we're green here. See what the margin of lead is. Two hundredths, 26 thousandths to be exact, with the second fastest run in the heat. But of course, World Cup loses two runs, combined time, and the American had enough in the bank to stay out in front. Thumbs up from Summer for that run. She seems happy. Well, you want to see her head back, which you see here. That's for aerodynamics. It also helps to relax the shoulders, keep the shoulders planted, which are part of your steering wheel. And here we are, nice form. She drops her head back. See her feet bouncing. That's making minor adjustments, and it's also bumps in the ice. The Americans back for just their third race as they took the entire first half of the season off due to the pandemic and all of the travel restrictions. And Britcher has the lead for the USA and has, Gordy, a very legitimate shot to move up one spot as she's just nine thousandths of a second behind this Russian, Batarina, heading into the run. Yeah, the next few sleds are all pretty tight, so we'll see if Summer can move up. Katarina Baterina, 28 years old. She is from the small town of Krusniask. It may be small, but it's, it's somewhat of a hub for the bobsledder skeleton athletes and losers from Russia, at least before the Sochi track was built. She got a nice cross into curve 11 and 12. Oh. She will not be catching the American, it would seem, as the two-time Olympian crosses the finish line back in seventh place. A slow run, so Britcher gets a little love in the later house for a few more. Maybe we should call it the later house, like later Hosen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this run was just not quite as crisp as she probably would have liked to have seen. You can see with her spike gloves, aggressively, accelerating the sled. That last paddle was probably not as long on the ice as it should have been. And here we are at a 13, just a little bit high in the end. You see she hits that right wall, but stays cool, keeps her feet up, which is really hard to do, and makes a nice correction. Still the top seven to come from Oberhof.
as American Summer Bridger continues to lead the way. Here's Russia's second to last entry, Victoria Demchenko, a winner of one World Cup race, on the podium for many more in her career. And the book Gordy on Demchenko is if she can stay off of the wall, she's as fast as anyone, but staying off the wall tends to be a challenge from week to week for Victoria. It's such a mental game, uh, the sport of luge, and really maintaining a clear mind and being focused on putting this sled within an inch or two of exactly where you want it to be. That's the key. It, it's all about setting up one curve for the next. She remains in the green, only three hundredths of a second ahead of the USA athlete with the lead down at the bottom. Not bad here. This is going to be tight. The speed is better than Britcher. This is a pretty solid looking run from Demchenko. Hangs on to her spot, a guaranteed top seven for Victoria Demchenko. And Summer Britcher will need some help from the next few athletes if she wants to continue to move up the ladder. Yeah, Victoria has a lot to be happy about with that run, actually. It's, you know, not a lot of points that you can nitpick on this one. It's been very Just much an up and down season. Who's had a, she's had another crash earlier this year. Yeah. You, you, want, you want to see the sleds making those transitions smoothly, and if you see any ice coming up from underneath the runners, that means they're losing time. Russia leading over USA and Italy with six still to come. Yeah, Victoria was a little bit earlier onto the curve, but both with good position. Counting them down from six to one here in Oberhof, Germany. This is Latvia's Kendia Aparioda, who earned a podium third place last month at the opening World Cup race here. This is actually a rescheduled event that was supposed to occur in Lake Placid. You would be home watching Luge, Gordy, if had it not been for the pandemic. Yeah, this is true. Pandemic certainly made for a strange year. It'll be interesting to see how time builds on this run. The Latvians have been building a lot of speed down at the bottom. Ooh, high into curve 11-12. Uh, but she does a nice job, but she's, the time is, is really starting to bleed at this point. Beautiful exit from 13, the transition to the closing Kreisel. Kreisel, the German term for carousel. She is back in ninth place. So the American and the Italian, Britcher and Better, each move up a spot. And Victoria Demchenko, who's always good for a leader area celebration, she holds on to the top spot. Just a little too much height in the exit of curve 10. You can see her problems start here in the labyrinth section. This is curve 10. Going into 11, she's just too early, too much cross. Gets knocked down, goes back up, and at that point, all that lateral motion, that sideways motion has cost her so much time. High here, a lot higher line than she actually wanted. We're in the central Lee region of Germany. This is a beautiful spot, forests and mountains all around the track. One of four competitive World Cup tracks in Germany. And now we have the next of our German athletes, Anna Bierreiter. Three Germans among the final six. Bierreiter with two career World Cup victories, one of them here in Oberhof last season. This is just her second year on the World Cup. The Germans are a powerhouse in this sport, competing on their one of their four home tracks uh, throughout the, the year that they'll see. And in this pandemic year, they're competing on some of these tracks multiple times, this being one of them here at Oberhof. And during the preseason, they have a chance to train on each of the tracks as well, get some extra reps, something that no other nation gets the opportunity to do. A very nice exit, exit of curve 13. Nice line through the Chrysler. Solid 41.13. That compares favorably to her first time. In fact, her, if that had been her time in the first heat, Gordy, she'd be in second place by just about 18 thousandths of a second. So she could move up the leaderboard with that run. 
It'll be interesting to see if the track speed is increasing, if conditions are improving versus the, the first to second run, or if this was just a really good run. I, I think it may be a little bit of both. But picture perfect here. Uh, I mean, just so smooth, good position, confident, solid uh, body position, not a lot of movement, feet are locked in, looking good. It's Germany leading over Russia and the USA with four remaining in Oberhof. Now, Yulia Tobitz, winner of five races this year on the World Cup Tour. That's more than any of the women although a 10th place finish by far her lowest, which was right here in Oberhof last month, keeps her looking up to Natalie Geisenberger in the season-long point standings. You see Talbot settle into the sled. You see her bending and really trying to horse the sled around with, with the, the start curve there. When the sleds are moving slowly, they don't like to drive so much. They're definitely harder to control at slow speed. Once they get going, it's a different story. They're very easily driven a little bit of a uh, little bit of drama there this is not quite the run I think she wanted at least during uh, into the curve 11 she's been known to turn it on down at the bottom but not with the back and forth line there in the straightaway she falls wow. back one spot be writer obviously pumped at the finish you know Anna did not take part in the racing the first half of the season she failed to qualify for the World Cup team so this is certainly a bit of redemption for that one German. Well, Tobitz has a fairly disappointing result, but it will still be a top five. Yeah, and there, are, as you said, overall World Cup implications here too at this point. A little bit too much height, too much cross into the entrance of curve 11. And that's what set up her, her problems. And that's where she lost all of her time really in that run. Julia put everything in perspective when I talked to her right before the season. I asked her if she felt any pressure to be the defending World Cup champion. And she said, I don't feel any pressure. I'm just happy to be losing. <laughs> well, that's a great attitude to have. Because if it isn't fun, then why, why come out here? Final three now set to go here in Oberhof, Germany, as we count them down to the podium positions. Anna Bioreiter of Germany has the lead down below, and here is Tatiana Ivanova of Russia, fresh off of her 16th career win last week in Latvia. That's number two on the all-time list among active athletes. Looked like she hesitated for a second there on her last paddle. And certainly, uh, Beer Rider has thrown one down, and this is going to be a challenge to respond to, but Ivanova is, is no slouch. Certainly, a lot of World Cup victories under her belt, comfort under pressure, but I think Beer Rider's really put something together here. So a Germany sweep still not out of the realm of possibility here. They hold the top two positions right now, and this Russian doesn't seem to be succeeding in the effort to catch them. Yeah, despite driving a beautiful lower course, it's not going to be enough. Well, it's not bad down below as she hangs on to a top two. That doesn't yet guarantee a podium for Ivanova. She'll need help from one of the final two athletes as Anna Bierreiter continues to lead the way. Yeah, I don't find a whole lot wrong with, with uh, Ivanova's run here. Perhaps maybe the little hesitation at the start put her back a couple of hundredths at the start, and, and that will add up. That, that might be where she lost her, uh, her lead. Ivanova's run is done. The top two right now are both waiting down at the bottom with Anna Bierreiter, that woman focusing her attention to the top. We just got a quick look at Natalie Geisenberger. The two-time Olympic champion will be the last to come down the mountain. Before she goes, we have Madeleine Egla of Austria. Egla, tall athlete who has been putting on muscle over the last couple of years, and the result has been blazing fast start times. Yeah, really powerful, aggressive paddling. Fast off of the handles, which she releases. She gets maximum extension. 
6.817 doesn't equal the start record she set earlier today, but it keeps her in the green. You want to hear nice, quiet, not a lot of scraping sounds. If you hear those scraping sounds, it means she's losing time. A lot of cross going into curve 11. Looking pretty good so far. Some lateral direction coming out of curve 13, but she's staying really cool and calm. Good position on the sled, head back. She hangs on by eight thousandths of a second. She was losing precious time on those final few curves, but holding on to her podium position. It's been a big breakthrough season for this young Austrian, former podium winner at the Youth Olympic Games. Madeline had five top five finishes, Gordy, before finally earning her first podium two weeks ago. And sometimes they say that's the hardest obstacle to climb, that first podium. Well, here's the strength of her, one of the strengths of her run was that start, very aggressive. Here's where she started to get a little bit of a problem, maybe knocked down a bit in curve 11 in the entrance. Does a good job of correcting the mistake, but you saw the, the real problem was actually out of curve 13. She had some lateral motion, but controlled that nicely and just hung on by those eight thousandths of a second. Well, a bit of drama brewing here in Oberhof, Germany, as we count them down to our final competitor, four-time Olympic gold medalist, Natalie Geisenberger. Back from maternity leave this season, eight races, eight second place finishes. She's in position for her first victory of the year. She's the all-time winningest competitor in the history of women's luge. But things are tight, Gordy, between she and the Austrian down below. Absolutely. Geisenberger with a beautiful start curve. She really settled into her sled and focused on driving those that nice line around the start curve. She's doing a beautiful job. Curves four, five, six. You can lose a lot of time in those curves where you but she didn't do it. She's driving a beautiful run so far. Lots of experience. Comfort on this track. Nice out of curve 13. Looking good. She has doubled her lead at that last split time. She will be the winner. Natalie Geisenberger does it with an exclamation point. A rare track record for run number two. So after a series of eight consecutive runner-up performances, Geisenberger back where she belongs on top of the podium with career victory number 50. 50 victories, that is just outstanding and wow. <laughs> I mean, and that was way to do it in style. That was an incredible run. That's her coach <laughs> Norbert Locke. As Natalie, the news gets even better for her. She heads home after this weekend. The races in Innsbruck, the track in Innsbruck and the track in Koenigsee are both about 35 miles or so away from her home in southwestern Germany. Here we are. Taking, she takes a quick peek, lifts her head up just to make sure that she's online, making minor adjustments to bring herself over to the right side of the track to make a smooth transition into the Kreisel, which is the finish curve. You can see her trying to lay back and let the sled run here, and her coaches are thrilled. Well, our congratulations to Natalie Geisenberger. I know that her husband, Marcus, and new son, Leo, are home in Miesbach watching right now as they see Natalie back on top. And she will take the World Cup lead as well. Congratulations to Aglo with another podium. And Summer Britcher gives the United States its best finish of the season, a seventh place. Yeah, and Ashley Farquharson in 10th is uh, a, an outstanding result as well. So that's very exciting for the U.S. team. Another solid race as the North Americans round out the top 20, Art in 19th and Maxwell in 20th place. That was great, Gordy. A lot of fun, that finish. Yeah, really exciting. And uh, 50, 50 victories is just outstanding. Winning one race is a phenomenal achievement, let alone 50. 